in three, two, one, go. All right, so this is Net Stories. It's an indie, indie Metroidvania game made by a guy named Niflis, who you may know for more popular retail games nowadays, like Within a Deep Forest, or Night Sky, or Net Underground. Uh, but this is one of his older games that was released before he made all those. So uh, what Net Stories actually is, is it's a level creation software program so that anybody can make their own levels using this engine. And it comes bundled with one game, which is this one, The Machine. And it is just a basic showcase of everything you can do using Knit Stories. And it's actually a really cool speed run. Uh, there's a lot of techniques and fast movement. I really enjoy this run, and it's really chill. So, you know, grab a cup of coffee this morning and chill out with Knit Stories. But there is one sequence break coming up. It's called Early Double Jump. It's really hard, so I need to focus. Dalton's going to explain it. Uh, Going ahead. Early double jump, it's um, normally you would need high jump, which is um, you get that a bit later on and you have to backtrack, so this saves about a minute. Uh, you can get this with regular jump. That was it right there. It's one uh, three frame input and then a two frame input. So I took a safety save there because it's not quite over yet. All this platforming is. Uh, yeah, I fell there. It's really hard because you're supposed to have high jump. Uh, this jump in particular is extremely precise. So I kind of need to focus for it. There we go. So early double jump uh, was the first real big sequence break found in this game. This game, despite being pretty innocent looking, actually has a rather storied speedrun history. So here I can do a trick called early laser cycle, which I failed which is pretty neat. Cool, cool. Thankfully, though, after I jump over this guy, there is a save here. Also, I know there's no music, and that's boring, but there's going to be music later, I promise. It's just the first area that doesn't have music. And double jump. Cool, cool. That's early double jump. It's probably the hardest of all the sequence breaks, uh, but we're past it now. So within the past couple months, Knit Stories has actually gone over a pretty big renaissance as a speed game. Uh, and there's been a bunch of new tricks found, one of which is coming up right here. It's something called the Flyer Double Jump. A uh, little too late. And this allows us to nice, do something called Top Route. And Top Route to High Jump saves about 25 seconds, which is a huge save. So it's one of the big renovations that's happened in the run in the past couple months. And it's mostly thanks to two new runners, who I'll give a big shout out to later, that all this is possible. And cool little movement here. You can manipulate enemies by moving in this game. And we got high jump. That was a pretty good top route. A lot of the enemies along that path are RNG based, uh, about when they shoot and where they shoot. Uh, but I got pretty good RNG, so I was able to dodge them all. A lot of the RNG in this game isn't just like you get bad RNG and you lose time. It's you get bad RNG and you have to react. So if you're a good player and you practice, you can basically negate most of the RNG in this run. So to talk a bit about the category I'm doing, this is the machine 100%. I already brought up what 100% is. Or I already brought up what the machine is. It's the level that comes bundled with the game. But what 100% is, is you have to get all the items and get the secret ending at the end of the game. Uh, so normally there's only one item that's optional, and that's the detector, which I'll be getting. Uh, but using glitches, and any percent run can also skip the hologram, which skips another major area. So 100% exists to show off more of the game. It also ends with the secret ending, which means you have to get all four red keys. Or all four keys, one of which is red, excuse me, <laughs> um, to unlock the secret ending at the end. So here I'm going to get eyeball which allows you to see spooky ghosts and also has Sikinar's favorite song in the game. <laughs> and after I get the eyeball, oh, eyeball, I need to do something called ghost jumps, which are pretty precise, so I kind of need to focus for it. That's one. Nice, got both ghost jumps. and some, you know, booby traps in this area. They're always the same, so you can just dodge them easily. 
So the next item I'm on my way to get is the Umbrella. The Umbrella is an extremely useful speed tool in this game. Also, I'm going to skip this save because we're, we're, we're living big. Think I'm going to die? Couch? Think I'm going to nah, die? Nah, you got this. Uh, think I'm going to die? Think I'm going to die? 50-50. Ooh, 50-50. I don't like those odds. Okay, cool. I made it. Cool. I'm proud of me. I'm proud of you, too. I'm Thanks. proud of you, VB. <laughs> Thank you, Dalton. I think that was Dalton. That said Anytime. That. Okay. Thanks, Dalton. Yeah. Uh, so here I get the umbrella, which is a very useful speed tool because it allows for a lot of skips to be done. Uh, the downside of umbrella is that it is very slow to use in just regular movement. There was also kind of a sketchy dodge, but I made it. It was it, it's okay, chat. We did it. We can get through this together. So here I'm going to go over the top of this part, and this is the first skip that's made possible with Umbrella. If I were to go along the bottom, I would have to wait for lasers to get over, out of the way. On the way there, that's like a perfect laser cycle, so you can just run right through. But on the way back, you'd have to wait, and that's really slow. So you go over the top. Uh, so coming up is going to be uh, the first really big, I guess, route deviation. Uh, from, I guess, a casual playthrough? I guess early double jump's a big deviation, but this is another big one. Uh, this is going to be the blue cave skip. Normally, to get back to the main area, you're supposed to go through blue cave, which is an area you'll be seeing later, because it's where the secret ending is. But it's slow to go through it now, so I'm just going to do a skip called blue cave skip. It's actually the skip that's been giving me the most trouble recently, so hopefully I can get this decently fast. Uh, if it takes me a couple tries, I'm not going to be like too upset about it. But I do need to focus. Serious time. Close. There we go. So now I can get the first of the keys. A little movement strat to get up there. Uh, so like I said earlier, the keys let you get the secret ending. And the first key is in this area. You can also only get the keys on normal mode, which is why we play on this mode for the speed run. Cool little strats here to avoid, try and avoid RNG as much as possible. I got very good RNG there. That uh, flying guy can snipe you if he's too low, and it's not a fun time. So now I'm going to go to my favorite area in the speedrun, the summit. Not to be confused with the Smash Summit. But uh, starting off, there's already one really cool jump at the beginning. That one to go over that guy. And then another drop here. And coming up is the double monkey room, which a lot of people consider to be the worst room in the speedrun. I got through pretty okay. You can get sniped really hard there. So I'm going to get the next key coming up, which is the yellow key. All right, and be sure to rate this drop on a scale of 1 to 10. That was like a 7. What do you guys think? I was going to say 8. Yeah, seven or 8. eight. Okay. I I'm proud of that. I would like put that on my refrigerator, that drop. <laughs> Frame it. Frame it. So what the hologram, the item I just, just got does, is normally there's a lot of enemies that only uh, attack you when you get close to them, but the hologram makes it so that they don't detect you when you get close to them. So it's really useful, it's required actually for casual playthrough to get around some enemies. Like I said, an ending percent run can skip it through glitches that I'll be doing later in this run because they are faster, but you still have to get hologram for the 100% definition. All right, so coming up is the detector item, which I mentioned earlier is the only uh, truly optional item in this game. What it does is it makes Junie glow red when there's enemies near her, or blue. Junie is the main character, by the way. Uh, so it makes her glow red when there's enemies near her, and it makes her glow blue when she's near a secret exit entrance. Uh, but there's three pretty difficult tricks right in a row. 
Uh, the first one is going to be the bottom strat to get to purple key early. And the purple key is, you may have guessed it, one of the four keys I need to get to the secret ending. And there's a pretty tricky jump you can do to get up to it without having to float over a lot of stuff. It's not too bad. But after that, there's going to be a trick called laser double jump, which allows you to do a faster route uh, to get down to detector. And then in the detector room itself is the hardest trick in the game that I'm only going to go for once. It's called the laser fast cycle. And it's a blind frame perfect jump. Uh, getting in to the lasers is pretty easy, but getting out is the blind frame perfect jump. That's the top route, or bottom route for purple key. It's pretty easy. And here's going to be my attempt at laser double jump. Yeah, I failed it. I'll give it, oh no, I'll just take the normal route. No biggie. We've got a $50 donation from Manzome Bromide that says, always glad to see independent games getting more publicity. And very glad to Nifilis in particular to get a bit of the spotlight. Looking forward to the Knit Stories run. And speaking of, we have a $517.06 donation from Nifilis. Nice. What's up? OK, hold on. One second. Before you read that, I need to go for this trick. Uh, I need to focus for it. Oh, that was really close. That was one frame off. OK, now I'm just going to go for the regular cycle. You can read that donation. Now. Excellent. Uh, for those keeping track, that was the dev of this game. He says, I'm super excited about your Knit Stories run. Look, good luck on your run. Save the animals. There's actually a Knit Stories level about saving the animals, so it's an easy choice. Nephilus has actually been extremely supportive of me running this game in GDQ. So shout outs to him. Uh, it's really cool when indie devs and the speedrunning community can get together. All right, so now I'm going to make my way down to the most complex skip in the game. It's the machine out of bounds. So basically, this is going to look pretty similar to the other tricks, but I'm going to get out of bounds instead of just getting to another area. And I'll explain the effects of what that actually means after I do it, uh, because it's a decently hard trick, so I kind of need to focus for it. Uh, please don't clap until I get back inbounds, because getting back inbounds is almost as hard as getting out of bounds. So <laughs> this is the out of bounds. If you tilt your head and look, it's not just random squigglies. That text actually says void. So now I'm just going to float out of bounds for a while. How are you guys doing? Pretty good. How about you? Cool. So now I'm back in bounds. And now I'm in the purified area. <laughs> so what that did was normally you're supposed to go through the machine cave and turn off the machine. And that makes the world purified and not uh, polluted anymore. But what actually happens in the game is when you turn off the machine, the game warps you to a purified map because the game can't change maps like that. So what I did was I fell out of bounds on the polluted map and uh, fell back in bounds in the restored map. And that skips the entire machine cave and most of the backtrack through the purified machine cave. That's a huge skip. Um, so now we just get the, the chill section of the run. Chill is code word for boring, by the way, in case you haven't figured that out yet. If you want to read a donation, now would be a good time. Absolutely. We have a $50 donation from Squishy Flan that says, hey, looking forward to this Knit Stories run. Same. I just hope VB knows better than to eat the mushrooms. You hear that? Don't eat the mushroom. You'll find out what that's about very shortly. We got a $5 donation from Daniel145 that says, so much love for this game. All right, so I'm coming up on the regular ending, but that's not time because the red key is actually an area that you can only access after, <coughs> excuse me, after getting the regular ending. Like a thing in my throat, that's weird. I'm getting choked up. The speed run's so good. Okay, I think it's good now. So now I can uh, mash through that text. I'm in the congratulations area. Congrats. Thank you. This is the red key room. It gets pretty trivialized by hologram because there's uh, orbs only attack you, or only attack the hologram and not you. Uh, so now I just need to backtrack to blue cave, which I mentioned earlier. And there's one skip that lets me do that. 
Uh, but before I explain that, I just want to give a huge amount of shout outs. Um, I mentioned earlier that uh, Net Stories has been going over somewhat of a renaissance lately as a speed game. And uh, two people who have been a huge part of that are two individuals by the name of Don Dolly and Glipperell. Uh, they've both found major skips for this game recently, and they're both really good runners. Uh, the world record has been changed hands between Glipperell, Don, and me. Uh, very, I think it's been within the past week we've all had it, which is pretty cool. Uh, no, I'm good. Thanks. Thank you for the water, but I'm good. Oh, thank you. I, I appreciate it. Shout outs to Railcoon for giving me water. Can we get a round of applause? Um, so yeah, a big shout outs to both of those two people for making the speed run a lot shorter. The world record dropped from 1644 to now it's at 1504. Uh, big drop. And a few shout outs to the original Knit Stories runners, Avex 300 and uh, Mobius Man, who both ran this game back when there weren't a lot of skips. Speaking of skips, who's ready for the final skip? I am. Thanks, Dalton. Yeah. Cool. First try. Nice. Nice. So now I'm going to go through Blue Cave and hopefully not die. And it's going to be time in a minute here when I get the regular ending. This ninja trolls a lot. Thankfully, he shot low. And I can get into the... Here, I'm going to break the key blocks. I guess you don't break key blocks. You unlock them. My bad. Oh, that was a sick death. Gnarly, dude. You mentioned you can only get those keys on the normal difficulty. Um, what do the other difficulties change since I believe all damage kills you instantly in this uh, game? It changes. It, uh, normal adds... Oh, wait. Get ready on time. Time. Uh, normal, adds more en er, normal adds more enemies and some obstacles are harder. That was, that was a speed run. Which comes to the secret ending. Yay. <laughs> Truly secret ending. <laughs> I like the music. Uh, what was the time on that? Uh, 1648. That's good. That's nice. not bad. 16 was my goal for the marathon. So I'm happy with that. <laughs> I'm not eating the mushroom. I apologize. <laughs> um, so that's pretty much it for me. Thanks for watching Knit Stories, and I guess a final shout out would be to Niflis for making this amazing game, and he's still making games to this day. Also, shout out 